Chapter 12 The Struggle for India's Freedom Nationalism arose in the hearts of Indians in the second half of the 19th century after the revolt of 1857 This feeling motivated Indians to stand against a common enemy the British government In December 1885 the Indian National Congress was born and under the leadership of this organization Indians fought a long and courageous struggle for independence which was finally won on 15th August 1947 This growing sense of nationalism led to the formation of many political organizations in different parts of India. For example, Pune Sarvajanik Sabha, Madras Mahajan Sabha, Bombay Presidency Association, etc. The most important of these associations was the Indian Association of Calcutta. Finally, the need for an all India organization led to the establishment of Indian National Congress in 1885. accumulated grievances of the people all sections of indian society suffered under the british rule the peasants were burdened with the land revenue system the indian craftsmen could not compete with the cheaper british machine made goods the educated middle class indians were not given any share of administration and were only given low paid menial jobs and the rising indian capitalist class got no support or protection from the british government administrative and economic unification of the country the british administrative and economic policies united india into a nation this was for the first time that all sections of indian society faced a common enemy and a common method of exploitation western thought and education Western educated middle class Indians were exposed to modern democratic rational and secular ideas the educated indians were inspired by the ideas from french and american revolution and they wanted to emulate these revolutionary ideas of liberty and freedom racial arrogance of the british the british practiced racial discrimination against the indians indians were not allowed to enter into the European clubs and not even permitted to share in the same compartment in a train with the European passengers. The moderate phase 1885 to 1905 the Indian national movement up to 1905 was dominated by leaders who have been called moderates. Their method of agitation was also moderate based on petitions meetings and speeches the moderates wanted more representation for the indians in legislative councils some of the moderate leaders were surendranath banerjee feroz shah mehta gopal krishna gokhale dada bhai naroji mahadev govind ranade rise of radicals and militant nationalism 1905 to 1915 leaders like bal gangadhar tilak lala lajpat rai bipin chandrapal and arbindo ghosh wanted the indians to be self reliant and to develop self respect in themselves they deeply hated the british rule and declared that swaraj was their goal tilak raised the powerful slogan freedom is my birthright and i shall have it as their demands were much more radical as compared to the moderates they were called the extremists partition of bengal vice roy lord curzon divided the province of bengal into two parts in 1905 eastern bengal and assam as one part and the rest of bengal which included west bengal bihar and odisha as the other part The justification given for the partition was that Bengal was too big a province to be administered efficiently and therefore should be divided for administrative convenience. However, the actual political motive was to crush the rising wave of nationalism in Bengal and to play the policy of divide and rule by separating the Hindus and the Muslims. Swadeshi and Boycott Movement To challenge the partition of Bengal, Swadeshi and Boycott movement were launched. Swadeshi, or the use of Indian goods and the boycott of British goods, became the main feature of this movement. 
Finally, in 1911, the British government cancelled the partition of Bengal and decided to reunite Western and Eastern Bengal and to create a new province comprising of Bihar and Urissa. Rising of Revolutionaries There were groups who did not believe in the peaceful methods of the Congress. These were revolutionaries active in Bengal, Maharashtra, Punjab and Tamil Nadu wanted to throw out the British physically. In 1908, Khudiram Bose and Prafulichaki, two young men, threw a bomb at a carriage near Kakori, which they thought was occupied by King's Ford, the unpopular judge at Muzaffarpur. While Prafulla Chaki shot himself dead, Kudiram was tried and hanged. Formation of Muslim League 1906 In order to weaken the Indian national movement, the British had started playing a game of divide and rule to separate the Hindus and the Muslims. This led to the formation of Muslim League in 1906. The League showed its separatist tendencies when it supported the partition of Bengal and also started requesting the British to give the Muslims a separate electorate. Surat Split 1907 The difference in the policies and methods of the moderates and extremists finally led to a split between the two in the Surat session of the Indian National Congress in 1907. The Congress remained under the control of the moderates while the extremists were excluded. Morley Minto Reforms 1909 The British enacted the Indian Councils Act in 1909. This act is also known as Morley Minto Reform after Morley, the Secretary of State and Minto, the Viceroy. The act tried to please the moderates by increasing the number of elected members in the Imperial Legislative Council and the Provincial Council. Moreover, the reforms introduced the dangerous principle of separate electorate for the Muslims. This was a part of the divide and rule policy of the British. Thus, it was very clear that these reforms had not really granted much. The First World War and the Lucknow Pact When the First World War broke out in 1914, Indian nationalists decided to support the British government in the hope that after the war, the British will bring about major political reform in India. But Bal Gangadhar Tilak and Annie Besant continued their agitation demanding Swaraj. A positive development took place in 1916. When in the Lucknow session of the Congress, moderates and extremists were reunited. Moreover, Congress and Muslim League signed the Lucknow Pact and decided to present common political demands before the government. Mahatma Gandhi arises on the national scene. Mahatma Gandhi arrived in India in 1915 from South Africa. He brought with him a new thought of struggle non-violence and non-cooperation based on Satyagraha. The Rawlett Satyagraha In March 1919, the British government in India passed the Rawlett Act which allowed the government to arrest and imprison any person without any trial or conviction by the court. Indians strongly opposed this act. This was the first nationwide Satyagraha led by Mahatma Gandhi. There were hartals, strikes, processions and demonstrations all over the country. It was during this time that one of the worst political crimes, the infamous Jallianwala Bagh massacre, took place. A Satyagrahi will always be truthful and peaceful, but at the same time he would never submit to what he considered wrong. A true Satyagrahi will be fearless. He would never bow down before evil. The military commander of Amritsar, General Dyer, fired at a large unarmed crowd who had gathered at Jallianwala Bagh to protest against the arrest of the local leaders. General Dyer and his men blocked the single exit of the ground and killed the crowd mercilessly. This incident stirred 
the entire nation and unveiled the brutal face of British imperialism. Formation of Swaraj Party After the withdrawal of the non-cooperation Khilafat movement, some congressmen led by C.R. Das and Motilal Nehru formed the Swaraj Party, a party within the Congress. They decided to fight the elections to the legislative councils, enter the legislative council and put forward their demands and oppose the government if their demands were not fulfilled. An upsurge of the revolutionary movement. An important development was a revival of the revolutionary movement. Chandrasekhar Azad formed a revolutionary organization called Hindustan Socialist Republican Association, HSRA. Bhagat Singh and B.K. Dutt to a bomb in the Central Legislative Assembly on 8 April 1929. The aim was not to kill but to alarm the British of this revolutionary spirit. In Bengal, the revolutionaries organized a well-planned raid at the government armory under the leadership of Surya Sen. Salmon Commission In 1927, British government appointed a commission to suggest further constitutional reforms in India. The commission was named after its chairman Simon since all the members of the commission were Englishmen, the Indian nationalists strongly protested against this commission. Wherever the commission went, it was greeted with Hartal's black flag demonstrations under the slogan, Salmon Go Back. The government used brutal suppression and police attacks to break the popular opposition. Purna Swaraj Resolution 1929 the Lahore session of the Congress in 1929 expressed this new militant spirit. Under the presidentship of Jawaharlal Nehru, the Congress passed the historic Purna Swaraj resolution demanding the complete independence. On 31st December 1929, the newly adopted tricolor flag of freedom was hoisted. It was also decided in 1930 session that 26 January will be celebrated every year as Independence Day. Civil Disobedience Movement 1930-34 The Civil Disobedience Movement was started by Gandhiji on 12th March 1930 with the famous Dandi March along with his 78 followers. Gandhiji walked nearly 375 km from Sabarmati Ashram to Dandi, a village on the sea coast of Gujarat. On 6 April, Gandhiji reached Dandi, picked up a handful of salt and broke the salt law as a symbol of Indian people's refusal to live under British laws and as such under British rule. The British government had increased the tax on salt, a commodity consumed even by the poorest section of the society. In 1930, Gandhiji declared that he would lead a march as protest against the SALT law. Roundtable Conference The British government organized the first roundtable conference in 1930 to discuss the Simon Commission report, but the Congress boycotted it. The British wanted the Congress to attend the second roundtable conference, so the Viceroy Lord Irwin signed a pact with Gandhiji called Gandhi Irwin Pact. British gave the right to the Indians to make salt for consumption and also agreed to release the Satyagrahis from prison. In return, Gandhiji went to London to attend the second round table conference. After suspending the civil disobedience movement, but the conference failed because the British were not ready to accept any of the basic demands of the Congress. Government of India Act of 1935 Pressurized by the agitations of the Indians, the British government passed the Government of India Act of 1935, which gave autonomy of the Indian provinces and elections were held for the provincial legislatures. Congress marked its popularity by forming ministries in 7 out of 11 provinces in the elections held in 1937.
resignation of Congress ministries. When the Second World War broke out in September 1939, Congress was ready to give support to the British in the war, but in return they wanted India to be granted independence after the war. But British refused to grant this demand. The Congress ministries therefore resigned in protest. Failure of the Cripps Mission To secure the cooperation of the Indians in the war and to get the resources and manpower from India to fight the war, the British sent in March 1942 a mission headed by a cabinet minister, Sir Stafford Cripps. But the negotiations failed because the Indian leaders were not satisfied with the vague promise to increase the number of Indian members in the Viceroy's Executive Council. British government refused to accept the Congress demand for the immediate transfer of effective power to Indians. Quit India Movement On 8 August 1942, the Congress under the leadership of Gandhiji passed the Quit India resolution demanding an immediate end of the British rule in India. But in the morning of 9th August, Gandhiji and all other Congress leaders were arrested and Congress was declared illegal. But the movement could not be crushed. All over the country, there were hartals, strikes and demonstrations. Indian National Army, INA and Subhash Chandra Bose Subhash Chandra Bose, one of the most powerful nationalist leader, escaped from India during this period to organize an armed struggle against the British rule. He formed the Azad Hind Forge, Indian National Army in Singapore to launch a military campaign for the liberation of India. Subhash Chandra Bose, popularly known as Netaji, gave his followers the battle cry of Jai Hind. Indian Nationalism After the Second World War After the Second World War, British realized that they cannot rule India for long. The British government therefore sent a cabinet mission to India in March 1946 to negotiate with the Indian leaders the terms for the transfer of power to Indians. The cabinet mission suggested that India should be a federation while giving a large amount of autonomy to the provinces and states. But Congress and Muslim League did not agree to certain aspects of the proposal. There was no option but the partition of the country. India wins freedom. Finally, Lord Mountbatten, the Viceroy of India, announced that India would become a free nation and a new state of Pakistan will be created along with a free India. The nationalist leaders reluctantly agreed to the partition in order to bring to an end the terrible communal rights. On 15th August 1947, India celebrated its first day of freedom, but the sense of joy was mixed with pain and sadness of partition. In a historic address to the nation on 14th August night in year 1947, Nehru put into poetic words the feeling of the people of India when he said, Long years ago, we made a trust with destiny, and now the time comes when we shall redeem our pledge not wholly or in full measure, but very substantially. At the stroke of the midnight hour, when the world sleeps, India will awake to life and freedom. The Major Steps Towards Partition the British policy of divide and rule had helped in creating the rift between the Congress and Muslim League. In 1940, Muslim League passed a resolution demanding partition of the country and the creation of a state to be called Pakistan. After the failure of the cabinet mission, large-scale communal riots started tearing the country apart. On 16th August 1946, Muslim League launched the Direct Action Day to get Pakistan by brutal force.